I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Toyota Land Cruiser without launch control. Here's some turbo spool. Not the fastest. Horsepower and torque. 326 horsepower, 465 pound feet of torque from a 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder hybrid iForce Max. So we are in the higher trim. The one with the square headlights instead of the circle headlights. Yes, but this has the exact same powertrain that you get throughout the entire lineup of which there are three trims. You get the 1958, which has the circle headlights. You get the Land Cruiser, which is exactly what they're driving right now. And then there's a first edition on top of this, which gets all the fancy stuff of this trim, but you get the circle headlights back. Yeah, which is pretty cool. And then this one's in a cool yellowish color with yeah. the two-tone roof, which is pretty important. Yeah, it does look really good with this two-tone. This is such a good throwback. I'm so glad Toyota did this. I love this boxy style. Good job, Toyota. And also thank you for flying us out here to San Diego and taking care of us while we're out here to review this thing and every other Toyota new ones in the lineup. So this is an off-roading beast, right? Theoretically, Yuri. Yeah, well, we did some off-roading in the other version and it was wild. It's so good for off-roading. We got a bunch of different modes and stuff. This one has a stabilizer bar that you can unlink for more articulation. Yeah, it is electronic and controlled with a button over here, but we did not have that on the 1958 edition, which we drove off-road. We are going to have a completely separate off-road review, so definitely subscribe for that one. Yo, on-road, this is pretty comfy. Like, good suspension, comfy leather seats, or at least I think they're leather. Yeah, but back to that suspension, it is really, really good out here. We are driving it on a road, so it's it's really compliant. It's really nice. Hey, what do you do on roads? You drive, you, you floor, floor it. it. <laughs> Definitely not the fastest. No, but it does have a lot of torque. It can tow a bunch. What can it tow? Uh, I think up to 6,000 pounds, Yuri. Mm, I feel like people who do use this for like, I guess, overlanding, camping, and probably taking jet skis places. Yep. That's good. And then we have an eight speed auto, which has been pretty good out here. Like no exceptional lag or anything like that. Yeah, no paddles, no. but I can put it in manual mode and downshift. And I do have a tack, which is pretty cool because you know, <laughs> a lot of the other Toyotas are CVTs, so yes. they don't have a tack. Yeah, and this is hybrid only for the entire model lineup for the uh, Land Cruiser. So do you like the body lines? Nice hard chiseled, like cool, like harder wheel arches and everything? I This gets me real hard, Yuri. I love <laughs> the hardness of everything about this. <laughs> I love that manufacturers have gone to this boxy style. It works so well. Like I, I'm just, I don't know, I like 80s cars. And like these headlights are growing on me, the square ones, because that goes back to a different Land Cruiser where the circle one goes back to another Land Cruiser. And I like, it's hard it, to decide. They both look so good. And it kind of looks like both grills and like headlights and everything are interchangeable. So if you crash yours, can you salvage from a different model and slap it on? We tried to ask Toyota, but we did not get an official answer, but it does look like it. <laughs> you know what else this does look like is a three row. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but this is only offered in North America as a two row. Yeah, but in other parts of the world it is three row. And you can really tell because these back seats, they fold up and then they fold up for access to the back. You're like, okay. Which there's also cup holders in the back in HVAC. I guess they can't like cannibalize sales of like a forerunner or a sequoia or something yeah exactly because yeah for th three rows sorry not four rows we're not there yet <laughs> okay uh these taillights are pretty sweet too yeah they're Just really nice nice simple design yeah, i love that leds they look great and then do you like these wheels i really like these wheels and what would be the continental recommended tire for a land cruiser the terrain contact ht for on the road but if you wanted to do some serious rugged off-roading the terrain contact at would be a great tire yo and shout out this platform because it can off-road the departure and approach angles were insane. We didn't like bottom out anything. Yeah, breakover angles, fantastic. But again, watch our full off-road review. Skid plates. Yes, they they all have skid plates underneath. So this kind of looks like an FJ Cruiser, right? It's got that vibe to it. Except only uh, two window wipers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What do you like more, the looks of this or an FJ Cruiser? That's a I feel like this one. is cooler right now. It is. But in 20 years, we'll have to revisit and decide. Yeah, but like, I love my used cars and I know how cheap FJs are. For like, imagine getting something cool off roady and heritage like for only like 15 grand Canadian. Like, that's okay, nothing. You buy three FJs on tsb.truecar.com and I'll buy one of these on tsb.truecar.com. Okay. Was okay. that driver yeah, intention? Yeah, that was driver <laughs> intention. Okay, and then another cool thing about this is the rear glass pops open. 
and this is a powered hatch where the other one we drove was not a powered hatch. Yeah, so the 1958 edition is like a base model. So yeah. yeah. And then we got black door handles, uh, remote start, proximity touch, all that good stuff. Power mirrors, even though they don't look like they'd be power mirrors, they look kind of like old school. Yeah, and this interior also is different than the 1958 edition where this one's a little bit more upscale. Like yeah, you don't yeah. have like super plastic everywhere. Feels like a little softer. And then we got these cool like eggplant colored seats. Oh yeah, okay. And they're not cloth, so that's nice. Yeah. We got forward back lumbar, we got electronic seats and presets, which is pretty sweet. And these seats are very comfortable and they are heated and cooled. And I think it's time to get my butt into the driver's seat. I'm gonna try and brake boost it. Ooh. Oh, much better. Yeah, heard that turbo spool. In sport? Always. I live my life sport at a time. <laughs> uh, so the pickup isn't as good as I expected from that massive torque number. Like this thing must be relatively heavy. Yeah. But it does feel pretty good. And you could actually feel that eight speed shift and I've got no problems with this eight speed, but I expected like a little bit more power from this thing, but it's it's not hey, like- TRD, TRD exists maybe in the future. Who knows? Maybe. TRD, maybe. Would that be a TRD Sport or Pro? Though? Who knows? They haven't done that for this. Like that would be pretty hype if they did a TRD Pro for this thing. Oh man. Just Raptor it? How could they not? Yeah. They it's definitely coming. I mean, Let's if, just... if, if it just sells like crazy and they don't have to do anything, why would they, right? Exactly. So we only have like one exhaust tip at the bottom sticking out. We should probably take a listen to the outside. Uh, but let's talk about how this drives on road. So the steering is very, very light, which I'm sure people on the road will appreciate because I also liked it off the road because it was very easy to control. Because it's electric power steering, I didn't think my thumbs were gonna get ripped off yeah. off-roading and stuff like that. So I think it makes sense for hey, it's got the like word. This. It's got the word cruiser in it. BT <laughs> cruiser, land cruiser, we're yeah. cruising. However, this is a four cylinder. It is not a V8, so I'm kind of upset, but I understand why Toyota had to do that. Hey, the world is what the world is. It is a changing. Times are a changing. You, you think you could pass this as a family car? I think so. I really could, think I could. Could your child fit in the back, probably, oh, in the yeah, child seat? 100%. Can you fit in the back? In 100%. A, in, a, in an adult seat at six foot one and a half? Maybe even a child seat in <laughs> myself at six foot one and a half. No, there's great room back there. Uh, tons of headroom. The seats are very comfortable as well. We got some ports back there. We got some climate back there as well. Even in the third row, there's so much climate. Yeah, in climate, here. cup holders, and they're like, it's for tailgating. It's like, you definitely didn't do anything to change it. Just like the CX 70 slash CX 90, except reverse order. That's right. And uh, I get it. And there is really good AC power back there too, which is good for powering stuff, especially if you are tailgating. And really good trunk space overall as well. Yeah, because it's. Yeah, that's in a, a row. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but back to those cup holders you mentioned, they will fit a cup of coffee, no problem. Will they fit a cold cup of who cares what it is because we got a cool box down here. That is pretty cool, Yuri. That, that is sweet, especially for family stuff. Exactly. Okay, visors. Ooh, let's see. This is will a they production block, vehicle. Will they block the sun? Three, two, one. No. No. And no. That's a, that's a fail, Toyota. Okay, but we got a moon, not a moon roof, a little sunroof here, which the other one didn't have. Yep. Love me some sunroofs. And then we also have a wireless charger down here. And in terms of drive modes, if we press this hard button, which is really nice to actually have a hard button for that, we do have sport, normal, and eco. And then we have a gauge cluster that will actually change the screen display, which actually looks pretty nice as well. So moving over to the infotainment screen, I got my CarPlay up. It does not have that cool mode that will put the menu bar at the very left yet. Yet. So that'll probably be coming in an update. The Camry though does have that. So Toyota infotainments are becoming great again. Yes, <laughs> uh, but we do have the larger 12.3 inch display in this one and we have a full digital display as well, unlike the 1958 edition. Yeah, I think the, the full digital is a lot nicer. It, it's cool, everything looks great. And we got JBL sound system in here. But they also split the climate into its own hard buttons so that it yeah. doesn't take up any screen real estate, which is really, really nice. Yeah, amazing, this is all USB-C powered stuff, which is like, okay. No USB A. At this point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little good. transition. Well, the Camry, yes. USB A. And then there's also a 360 camera on here, which is awesome. You can see under the car, you can see cool angles. Then in your gauge cluster, you can also see what angle you are driving at for when you go off road over landing. And we do have a head up display in this trim. However, it's a little bit blurry because it's, I guess, something projecting on the windshield. But this is a prototype vehicle, a pre, pre production. And in terms of off roading, we do have a center locking differential, a rear locker that uh, stability bar disconnect that you mentioned earlier. And then this is full time four wheel drive. So we have four high and then you can push it and go into four low. It is all very easy to use control. Yep. Especially if like you're used to off-roading, like 
the old things where you have multiple things to switch <laughs> over. Yeah, and I am hearing some wind noise right now just because I think the angle of the windshield, we're going uh, quite fast out here. Honda so, Element Life. Yeah, not quite, but <laughs> similar. I was going to say G-Wagon because this is kind of similar to that at a much lower price point. But I do like driving this thing. Like, the suspension's really nice and all that kind of stuff. So I think people are going to enjoy this as a family vehicle. Yeah, well, especially like in this trim, right? Yeah. Like how dirty would you want to get it? I could see this fitting in so well in like Muskoka. Okay, what which if, for, for anyone that doesn't live outside of Toronto, <laughs> it's just like really nice cottage country. What if you had three tall people in the back? Check this out. We got Digital. a screen there. That's nice too. Yeah, so it is very high res as well. So thank Is there you. anything you don't like about the interior of this? No. Not one thing. Not one thing. Okay, well, we have Safety Sense 3.0, which every single Toyota seems to have nowadays. So we have good adaptive cruise and lane centering and all that stuff. So that is also nice to have too. And then we have a hard button for a 360 camera down here as well. And then we have uh, the thing where we can talk to it and have it go to the Sirius XM channel you want, which is also awesome for conveniences. And then the only, I guess, tuning volume infotainment button we have is this volume knob, which is, almost looks like it's part of your gauge cluster yeah almost. i don't even know if you can see it i can see it a little bit but like you know it's it's it, that's and then something else that you might care about is fuel economy since this is a hybrid so this gets 23 miles per gallon combined whatever that is in liters per 100 kilometers so i feel like that's pretty much everything we need to talk about for daily driving road driving a land cruiser we should probably get to the price hit me with it the 1958 edition starts at 55,950. American. And this one is 61,950. And the most expensive one is 74,950 for the first edition. And they're only making 5,000 of those for North America. Not sure how many to Canada. That to me is the one to get because I don't know if you'll be able to build that or have that again later. I'm sure they will. But feature wise, it seems so expensive compared to this one. Like this one seems like the one to get in terms of pricing. Circle headlight. I know. Number one. Yeah. This is cool though. They really force you into those like high yeah. trim circle headlights. But it's, I can see people like like getting this one and loving it. It is wild that there are two different types of headlights yep. for a, like a single model. Yeah, exactly. That is like probably one of the coolest things. It is. As a company, Toyota, you did a great job on something like that because I don't know how many other companies would do something like that. So look forward to our other upcoming Toyota reviews and thank you for watching this one because we know that your feed was littered with Toyota reviews. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you guys enjoyed this on-road review and let us know if you end up buying one because I'd love to see pictures of them and I want to see them on the road every day. Yeah, go to tsp.truecar.com because they might not have it at this time, but later on they will have it on the website for sure. Or get an FJ Cruiser Ooh, in yellow. Three or four of them. With the white top. Yeah, yeah.